everyone, and welcome to the final episode of Dice Will Roll Ruby Phoenix, the queerest Pathfinder podcast on the planet, where we ask the hard questions like, if you met a mythical sorceress and competed in a fighting tournament to earn an incredibly powerful artifact from her infinite vault of treasure, what would that artifact do? Um, infinite beignets. Explain. <laughs> I fucking love the good beignet, man. <laughs> You've never lived until you had one. Yeah, I also love a good beignet. Beignets are really oh, good. Fuck, they're good with like a little powdered I've... sugar on top. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. I thought you guys were saying bidets, and I was shocked. I was truly shocked. You think I would wish infinite for infinite bidets? bidets? <laughs> I was like, you, you only really need you one good one. That? <laughs> one would be fine for the rest of my life. You think I'm gonna break it and need How? infinite? How clean do you need your ass to be? How stanky is your ass that you break a bidet? <laughs> that would be scary. That would be, be really real. scary. <laughs> I personally would win a medallion, which lets me uh, transform into a uh, leopard. That's what I would do. That's what you'd do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... <laughs> I see. That's good. So this isn't as good as the infinite bidets, then? No. Infinite beignets! I think infinite beignets uh, tops that. Yeah. Bidets are generally used for bottoming, I understand. Okay. Do you want to die? Can we start the episode? (laughs) We Um, we just wanted to talk about food, and you made it weird. (laughs) I want to see my NPC friends. Can we start the episode? (laughs) Fellas, welcome, welcome, welcome. After more than a year... After 50 episodes, after me going to California, coming back, jobs have been started, uh, life decisions have been made, we have come finally to the end of Fists of the Ruby Phoenix. We've bested Sindara, we have defeated the Light Keepers, we've smashed Oni's Mask, we've survived the might of Mogaru, and you know what? We even did pretty good on Danger Island. Today, we're going to wrap things up. We're having our little epilogue. And my goal is to make you cry. So let's see if I can do it. Buzz, would we like to hop into character? Not so sure. <laughs> I think it's a good time to. Okay. I'm sure okay. you do. The three of you all wake up in lush palace bedrooms. Cushions made of the finest fabric with the um, most beautiful of colors and the most lavish of furniture surround you on all sides as you slowly drag yourselves awake. This seems like a bedroom fit for a queen, which it is, because this is one of the bedrooms of the Imperial Palace of Goka, Nayan Fei's place. A little bit after you got back from your rescued Ruby Phoenix, Nyan Fei personally gave each of you a bedroom where you could stay here in Goka. It's a not-so-subtle request for you guys to stick around and do more of your legendary hero stuff in her city to keep it safe, but you true to Radiant Winds, and who knows where that Radiant Wind will blow. Before anything else, I want to ask, um, are the three of you in your own individual bedrooms, or have you, like set up a big communal bedroom what's what's the layout here um i don't think uh chuji makes that choice uh because as soon as chuji sees a bed they're laying on it and they're fast asleep when they get back chuji sees anybody's bed and is like that's it I think, <laughs> just, I think 24 you, hours pass <laughs> you got to the palace and you saw a futon and you probably let out like ah. And you just shriveled up on it. Yeah. And the others had to move you somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, Masami and Sanku, what do you think? Individual rooms or one big room? So, I mean, um... Sanku's chill with anything because he he obviously likes spending time with his with his friends, but he's also not going to be upset by sleeping in his own room because, you know. I also don't think Masami would have minded having like a big room with the three of them because, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Things are pretty much ending tournament-wise, so in a way, I guess they kind of want to stay close. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think that's cute. So you all wake up. It's a very big room, multiple beds, a few partition screens, but you're all kind of flopping up, getting your, putting yourselves together. It's been, I think, maybe a day since you got here. You know, you arrived in the city. There were, like, screams of applause and a blur of things happening, but you didn't meet with anyone. You guys basically immediately were conked out and resting mm -hmm. because what an adventure you've been on. Yeah. Um, and I think Lolo is just in Sanku's bag, sleeping. You can hear him snoring. There's really bubbles coming out of it. I'm going to drop the tree of you in and let you guys talk to each other a little bit before before we begin the events of the day that you get crowned the Ruby Phoenix uh, champions. I think um, Sanku wakes up and rolls out of bed. Hmm. If that means he has to roll over somebody to do that, it happens. <laughs> he rolls over Chuji, who is firmly family guy death posed. <laughs> He gets up and he starts. He he like pokes Chuji and he's like, "Art, mm. you're alive, right? Mm -hmm. You died. I'm a minute. Okay. Um, I think I think uh, while he's waiting for people to wake up, <laughs> I, I think I think he's uh, he's preparing spells because he does that every day. But he's certainly looking behind himself like every few minutes. He looks up. He looks back with like the, the puppy dog eyes. <laughs> I think out of the three of them, Masami is probably like the less chaotic one, uh, or the less chaotic sleeping one. Uh, they are kind of sleeping on their side in like fetal position, though. Uh, this is like one of the few times that Masami hasn't woken up early or first because stakes aren't high enough. They're going to be crowned the um, the Ruby Phoenix champions. No one's in imminent danger. They're taking the time to sleep. <laughs> uh, Chuji, honestly, God, I think Chuji literally like slides out of bed onto the floor. You okay? I'm so tired still. Do you do you need do you need it? Do you need water? No, I'm. Uh... That was just rough. I think I need to sleep for another week. I understand that. It was... It was a lot. Their hair is, like, sticking up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> They've got crazy fucking bad head. I think they do eventually, like, get up and are... marginally human again. They they like kind of stretch and they look back at Masami who is still in bed. This is like bizarro world. <laughs> Have you ever <laughs> seen Masami asleep before, Chuji? I don't think so. <laughs> no. It's like how you've been friends with someone for like eight years, but you've never like I don't know. You've never seen them wear like sandals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird. Sink <laughs> um, is like I'm. I'm not waking. I'm not waking them up. Should should I wake them up? Should we let them sleep? Uh, I've already finished my spell stuff. Not that I plan on casting a bunch today, <laughs> but uh, I, I like being prepared. I I think King Mogaru got got uh made me think about how important that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> fair enough. Why don't we make Lola wake them? Chuji turns to Lolo. Lolo is in Sanku's bag, and there are snore bubbles coming out of the bag. Uh, Chuji reaches into Lolo or into Sanku's bag and grabs Lolo. Uh, so what happens is you pull out your hand, and Lolo is biting down on the wrist, like covering your entire hand. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why you thought anything different. Was Chuji is shaking Lolo. <laughs> Get off. Uh -huh. mm. You fucking bit me! Did I? Well, that's yes. most peculiar. I had a dream that I was eating a delicious piece of roast beef. It was so succulent and juicy. Oh. <laughs> Chuchi brings Lolo up to their face, slowly mm. grabbing them like fucking Jerry the Mouse. Uh, 
And they're like, you're going to wake up Masami. All right, why didn't you just ask? We'll go do it. Lolo slitters out of your grip and plops down all wet and cold on your shoulder, Masami, and says, Masami, wake up! Wake up, M- M- Masami! Yeah. Good morning. Jesus. Fucking Lolo. Shuji asked me to wake you up. <laughs> I didn't. He's lying. Sanku, back me up. Yes, yes. <sighs> Sanku. I didn't. Shuji. Everyone's lying about me right now. I'm being gaslit. You're being gaslit. Yeah, I don't... That's okay. <laughs> That's not how that word is used. Good morning, Masami. You look well. Rested for once. Thanks. Could have done with something a little less wet. I cannot help my state of being, Masami. I am what I am. And I am a wet old man. Ugh. You... Don't say it like that. <laughs> he looks over at you, <laughs> tilts his head a little bit. That's disgusting. Don't ever say that about yourself. <laughs> Not for your sake, but for everyone else's. <laughs> How did everyone sleep last night? He deflects. <laughs> uh, I... Fine. Really, really hard. It's never enough. Well, I guess, uh... Still really tired. I think we we will be for some time. I don't know about the rest of you, but I could do with a long time of rest. I mean, we don't need to go adventuring immediately. No. No, we don't. We may or may not deserve... <laughs> we may or may not deserve a vacation. Other teams might even take this as a sign to retire. There's nowhere to go from here except, well, sideways. We've reached the heights of our power, I'm sure. We're not retiring. You crazy? I'm 18! That'd be boring! (laughs) I'm quite glad. Gigi and I are still in our young to mid-twenties. We still got time. not in my mid-twenties. I said young to mid. I'm 23. I'm also 20... (laughs) Lolo says, so young? Why, 23 years ago, I remember it like it was just yesterday. You see... We're not, and as he's about to go into a big story, there's a little knock, knock, knock on the door. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and Senku goes, huh. Oh. And open it, when you open the door, standing outside and smiling, is one lady, Kumai Shai, the handmaiden to the Empress. Cute. I love her. Radiant Winds, hello. Good, good morning. And you can see she's like absolutely delighted to see you all here. Oh, I missed her. Um, Senku smiles and he's like, oh, good morning. Um, and she walks in and says, um, Empress and I and Face sent me to make sure that you are all doing well. Would you all be all right if I checked in on you? Well, that's what you're doing now, isn't it? Yeah, of course. No worries. You're just waking up. She kind of comes in and she sits down and, um, she smiles softly and says, It's good to have you back. I knew you'd be able to do it, but that was quite the historical adventure, wasn't it? I'd say maybe it will go down in story and song, except it already is. Already? Already? It's been going down in story and song. Um, shortly after the Mogaru attack. And she leans in, she's already gossiping a little bit. <laughs> Um, oh, Lady Zaishia, you you remember her, the um, the mm. woman who was tricked into hiring that awful Tengu man. Oh right, Shen sponsor. Yeah, that's right. Yes, uh, the sponsor of the Steps of the Sun. Well, she is penning an opera based on your exploits. A oh, what? Who's playing us? <laughs> I don't know if there's been casting yet. She's not finished, but the name of the play will be The Wings of the Phoenix. That's I kind of sick oh as fuck. God. I see. That is so weird. <laughs> you will literally be the stuff of legend. How does it feel, Radiant Winds? Right, oh. but weird. Uh, that's hmm, strange. I feel perceived. I've always wanted to be like yes. a story hero um, and go down in history, but it's kind of weird while I'm still alive. 
how do you think it will feel to see yeah. yourself being portrayed in a singing role, Master Chuji? What sort of songs uh, do you think they may give to your character? Can I, like, contact her and make my role non-singing? I don't do that. <laughs> uh, it's an opera. Well, I'm I... afraid it's a little bit out of your hands. She smiles coyly. I... What? <laughs> I don't think that there's any way that you could not be a singing role in an opera, especially if you're one of the main characters, because that's how the opera works. Okay, well, maybe they can just do sick fucking flips on stage and say nothing. <laughs> you, you don't say nothing. You say no, quite a bit, No, but I don't fact. fucking sing either. Well, if it makes you feel any better, Master Shi, I don't know that you'll be doing much singing yourself, but the actor playing you well, might. no. Yeah, but it's... Can they, like, cross their arms and then, like, huff and, like, it's not accurate. Oh, uh, you must forgive no her for taking artistic liberties <laughs> in the opera of your story. No one thinks that you sing everything in real life, Juji, I promise. Um, and she smiles a little bit and says, I suppose I can tell you a little bit about the other gossip. Oh? Oh, yeah? Master Sauron captain of the Celestial Jeanne has been uh, given permission by his employer, uh, Master Vortanu, to take the Celestial Jeanne uh, on a trip with Last Brett to recover Captain Baco's missing sea serpent son. Oh, oh really? Nice. And um, on top of that, Empress Nayan Fei is uh, already looking into uh, designating a part of the woodlands to the northeast of Goka to the yokai who came with you uh, to set up in that large Tanuki's words a permanent night market. There may be even a road built into the uh, woods so that uh, travelers from Goka can reach it easily, spend their gold there. Oh, wow. Well, there was the arrest. The arrest? <laughs> Lord Buken Tagora, the spider of Goka, has been arrested. He was, you'll remember, the sponsor of the Lightkeepers. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would appear, according to the investigation by the Butterfly Blades, that um, he was the man who moved around Sindara's money and organized his mercenary contacts, including Oni's mask. Masami, if they're sitting at the table right now, Masami like is pounding the table on their fists like, I knew that man was sus as fuck. I knew there was something up with him. He was most unpleasant, and he talked to them very quickly. It was no coincidence, it seems. Uh, he didn't make it any... He... If he was trying to make it low-key, he did a really poor job at it. Not subtle at all. Not even a little bit. And she smiles a little bit and says, And there is one more thing concerning the sponsors, but perhaps it's best you go down to the Golden Kabuto yourself and speak with Master Ida. He has much he wants to show you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we should really follow up with our own sponsor, shouldn't we? Yeah. Considering <laughs> what he's been doing, I think you'll be very excited to see what he has in store for the city. And she, she is smiling very coyly. <laughs> you have your crowning ceremony and the awards today, don't you? Yeah. Radiant Winds, I'm, I'm very proud of you. A better team couldn't have won. And I think she kind of stands up and says, I wish you the best of luck. Say goodbye to all the other teams today. I think many of them will be heading out soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. They have their own worlds to go back to. It pains me, but... Friendships don't last forever, I suppose. And she kind of smiles, and as she's standing up, she says, I do hope you'll be staying in Goka for a while at least yourselves. Goodness knows you've earned it. Well, I don't think we have any plans to leave immediately. No. Um... Nothing in the books just yet. We were planning on just relaxing for a while, so we felt like getting back into it. Mm -hmm. So she smiles a little bit, and she says, Well, hopefully I'll be seeing you all again very soon. 
And as she leaves, I want everyone to make me a perception check, please. Okay. Um, Sanku, as Kumai Shai leaves, you see that she has actually left a little piece of paper on the on her chair. And uh, in flowery handwriting seems to be a note folded over with your name on it, Sanku. It's a good thing the other two rolled really low on their perception for once. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, while the others are not looking, I think uh, Sanku opens the note. And it reads, Sanku, out of all my friends from the Radiant Winds, I've always felt closest to you. And I've realized in your time gone that perhaps my closest to you is something more than just friendship. I'd like to put this hypothesis to the test. Will you join me for dinner next week? (laughs) Sanku's jaw drops. Oh my god. Get some. (laughs) Sanku, my boy, what's wrong? Sorry, me and the bad bitch I pulled by being autistic about dragons. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> the two of them were like, I fucking love dragons. Uh, nothing is wrong. What's that you're reading, boy? Is it a grocery list of some Stop! sort? Yes, it is. Well, I'm convinced. Wow. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Masami just kind of sits back because they know Chuji has this. Chuji's leaning over the table and they like have both their hands on it as they lean over and they're like, what is it? I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Why are you acting like that? What is it? Let me see. And they kind of like grab for it. No! <laughs> He's trying to What are you hiding? Sanku sharing Nothing. his carrot. Show Chuji the shopping Sh- list. No! Yeah. It's hey, maybe my... I want to put something on it. It's my shopping list. Well, it can be our shopping list, so let me see. And they grab it. No! Or do they try I to. I think, Chuji, unfortunately, the fact of the matter is that you have much higher physical stats than Sanku. <laughs> and Not unfortunate yeah, for me. Fortunately for you, you get to read what it says quite quickly. You see Chuji put this paper up to their face. And it's so slowly. It lowers... And Chuji's face is revealed, and they look so fucking smug. <laughs> you they're doing, finally, they're doing the have... like, you like Krabby Patties, don't you? <laughs> You're doing the fucking. This is an anime act. You're doing the Anya Forager smug face. <laughs> you can't. They like tilt their head to the side. They hand it back to to uh, Senku. And they say, "I'm not gonna say anything." But just know that I know. I'm gonna tease the fuck out of you for this. Tease him about a shopping I'm list. Telling Sh- so <laughs> I'm telling Shen one of your darkest secrets. You don't know my darkest secrets. So one more person is privy to the know. secret. Uh, Masami says that they're making tea. I am telling <laughs> Q your darkest secrets. Yeah. And what's that? <laughs> You embroider your name into your tiny whities. I don't know something. I do actually believe that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so mean? To him? Regardless, you spend some time teasing one another, and you have some time before the celebration. You can visit Casohida, and you can uh, go see the other teams. And if there's anyone in town that you want to go visit, you can. The choice is yours. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm literally shaking. <laughs> uh, Just kidding, the choice isn't yours. What? Um, okay. Well, because fine. as you guys are leaving this place, you are set upon uh. by a group of four people. And two of them, well, one of them, rushes forward, hugs Sanku, and says, Oh, my little Sanku! Oh, my little Sanku! (gasps) You saved (gasps) the world! Yeah, I did. And holding you is Bula, mother of the prince, beaming at you. Um, And it's five, not six. I forgot that Kin Hassan, sister of the prince, is here, jumping up and down. And Baba Yon, I think, is standing beside her, looking very proud of you, Sanku. 
and uh, Bula looks to the three of you and says, you know, I am certain that at least part of it is because of that little necklace we gave you. Right, Sanku? And she holds out the little, she uh, like the, you know, the dragon carp necklace. And she says, did it bring you good luck? Did it help you? Yeah, it did, Mom. That's my Sanku. Oh, I'm so proud of you. The newspapers are saying that you flew in on some sort of starboat. Uh, yes, that is true. And um, Babayon in the back says, And uh, it is to my understanding that you met the celestial dragon? Uh, yes, that is true. That is also true. <laughs> and did you, sh- did you show him the what for on Lolo's behalf? And Lolo looks up at you. Yes. Big- oh, ooh, he just kind of melts into you a little bit. Oh. And- yes, I did. <laughs> And it's true, he did. <laughs> Kim Hassan hugs you and says, I'm so proud of you! I'm going to tell all my <laughs> friends at school! Well, yeah? Mm-hmm. And Bula says, and with the money that you've helped earn, Balam Village will be... <laughs> You'll help lift it out of poverty, Sanku. That's what I wanted to do. Thank you. I didn't forget home or anything. And coming up to you, Chuji, as Sanku is smiling and hugging his family, in comes your own mom. Oh. Chi Li Hua, and she smiles and says, Chuji. I... And they don't even say anything else. They just go up and hug their mom. She also goes in for the hug. There's a moment where the two of you are looking at each other before you both step forward and hug each other tight. And it is such a tight hug. Like, the two of you don't want to let go. And I don't know how Chuji feels, but what what Li Hua feels is that she came so close to losing you. Mm-hmm. That the the cracks in your foundations were coming to be so close to knock the building down, you know? Mm-hmm. But after everything, she wants to rebuild the house and she wants to make sure it never has cracks again, you know? Oh, yeah. And as she's hugging you, she says, I'm proud of you, Chuchi, and I I really mean that. I'm sorry for being scared, and I'm sorry for not believing in you. You're the best child I could have ever asked for, and I'm sorry I never saw that before. Stop. It's all I've been able to think about since you left. Uh, I... All I wanted was for you to be proud of me. I did all this stupid stuff for you. <laughs> I always was proud of you, Chuji. I just didn't realize it. You're always going to be my little baby, Rushi, but you're so much more than that, too. And you're not making the same mistakes I did. And I'm happy for you. Just don't forget old mom, okay? Why would I? I'm glad you said it like that, and she hugs you so close. Oh! Oh, by the way! And I think she kind of, like takes your hand, Chuji, and walks you a few steps, and uh, the palace is up on a hill, so you can see most of Goka, but she points mm-hmm. and says, do you see it? Is it back? The Grand Gokan Museum oh. is back in its old place. Chuji, let's be real, Chuji was tearing up already, uh, but they, <laughs> they see the museum back, and they are so fucking filled with joy. Um, they They look over to their mom i think that they're holding hands um mm-hmm. they look over to their mom and they're like <laughs> their like lip is quivering uh and they're like i i saw it um when or before we were going to fight sindara and i we got teleported inside of it while it was in the thing and i tried so hard not to break anything and i tried so hard <laughs> not to let anyone else break anything everything in the museum was under the effects of a stasis spell Whoever oh, captured God. it wanted it to be in one piece. Ugh. They like kind of like, collapse on their mom's shoulder, which is kind of like, which is kind of funny because their mom is shol- uh, a little shorter than them. Mm-hmm. And they hug you, and she. I think you're about to just quiet for a bit, because you both got what you were looking for. It was there the whole time. I was really worried that maybe. We wouldn't win. And maybe we wouldn't get Haojin back. And maybe you wouldn't get. Maybe you wouldn't get your museum back. 
But we did. And I know you wouldn't, but I've never wanted you to regret me. I could never regret something that's changed my life for the better the way you have. She hugs you again. I love you, Mom. I love you too, Chuji. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> um, Masami. Mm hmm. Cool guy leaning against a gate, looking up at you and smiling, is one Hiroshi Takahara. And he kind of smiles as you come over. And he. I think he brushes your bangs a little bit and says, Hey, kid. I love what you've done with your hair. <laughs> well, it was, uh... I guess you could say I made a change, but... His soft expression shifts ever so slightly as he looks at you, Masami, and he really looks at you. And he says... You've been through a lot, huh? <laughs> Why do I feel like that statement's kind of an understatement? <laughs> I think you're the only one who knows exactly how much, kid. How'd it go? Give me a quick debrief. Well, uh... We had to summon the Celestial Dragon to get there, to get to Sindara. Uh, got there. Eventually. They say, just kind of like toying yeah, he, with like the white end of their hair. He looks at you and says, Kid, I've seen enough people come back from the grave. It kind of comes with my line of work. I'm not gonna press, but I want to ask, are you okay? And I really mean it. Are you okay? Um, better, actually. Better? Much better than any mission that I've ever come back from. I... It sounds kind of fucked up to say, but doing that made me realize a lot. And... I'd rather not see it lost. But hey, let's not lose it, okay? <laughs> I know. Think fast. And he throws a punch. <laughs> Masami, I think, um, blocks it with their forearm, mm -hmm. and then immediately try to go for like a um, a palm strike to his neck, but stop immediately below his chin. Oh, he d does not have time to react to that. He completely oh. doesn't. And he, <laughs> like, there's like a whoosh of wind, you know, anime style. And he looks down at you and says, "Huh, the students surpassed the master, then." <laughs> About damn time. You know how many ass kickings I got from you? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're okay, Masami. He says his voice is really low. And for a moment, I think for the first time ever, you see weakness. Actual, genuine fear and concern and vulnerability, you know? He was really worried about you. And he's well, then, relieved that you're okay. He won't react to this either. Masami pulls him into a hug. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, he doesn't react to it, but he's like, whoa. He's kind of got his hands in the air like he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> but he does hug you, and he hugs you tight with his big fucking man arms. Um, and he pulls away and says, Oni's mask? <sighs> Finished. They, uh reach behind and do like a small showing of the Vorpal Katana Oof. and they say, <laughs> for good. Good. Because you've got other problems. <laughs> Great. Is it the family or is it something else? Well, last night we had a breakout from the Golden League headquarters down in the Undermarket. See, we had <sighs> uh, imprisoned two figures with anti-undead runes and somehow Fuck they just walk past them. God. It seems that Devil's Jews have given up their uh, Jiangxi phase and are back to being just tieflings. 
Did something happen that Mike turned them back yesterday? Uh, I mean, the whole, like, becoming Zhangxi thing, I think, was either a Sindara thing and or a Lightkeeper's thing, and they're also gone. So, spell broken? Hitomi's already uh, got intel on them, and, uh, and he kind of flicks through a few notes to the little booklet he's got. <laughs> Apparently... They are going on a self-professed crime tour with their fans. <laughs> so oh that's something you'll have to keep an eye out on. There's no way. <laughs> a crime tour? I hate them. <laughs> they were last seen uh, fleeing uh, the, the limits of Goka, uh, loudly proclaiming, Devil's Jews back all right. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. They seem to be too stupid to be dangerous, but just keep an eye out. Uh, seems like it. I'll make sure to keep tabs on this city, if anything. Uh, oh god, I have a feeling they're gonna be a headache. He smiles and says, so what's the plan today? Uh, be crowned Ruby Phoenix champions. Do some stuff and, like, see other people, see, like, the other teams beforehand. Okay. Other than that... Do you feel ready for it? Ready to be perceived? Am I ever ready for that? You're the one who signed up for this. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I didn't know if I... I, I thought I, I envisioned making it this far, but... Now that I'm actually living it, it's like, uh, weird. I'm a hey. ninja. <laughs> hey, you're not a ninja. You're a Masami goddamn Takahara. And anything you can set your mind to, you can do, kid. Well, I mean, still technically a ninja, but like, I'll I mean, you deal know with I the mean. public. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal with the public speaking, or Sanku can deal with the public speaking. It's fine. You just have to stand behind him and look mysterious and cool. It's what I do at most public speaking events. Yeah, I mean, like, I learned that from you. <laughs> like father, like kid, huh? Yep. So the three of you have all spoken to your family a little bit, but you still have time to go do some other stuff before the crowning ceremony. You've been advised to go say hi to Kasuhida, and mm -hmm. you've been advised to uh, say goodbye to your friends before they all leave to their homes around Galarian. Oh my god. Yeah. I don't want to. I'm sorry, but that's just... It's a worldwide fighting tournament. I'd rather fucking die. Why don't you go say hi to Kaso first? How, how about that? Okay, sure. Do you guys make your way down to the Golden Kabuto HQ? Yeah, we go find Hida. Yeah. So, you guys make your way down. And um, standing at the door are two figures you recognize. And I think maybe something in you tells you to wait and hide around the corner and listen to them for a moment before you approach. Okay. Because the two figures... I, okay, well, hmm? they, well, Sanku and the others do the thing that happens in, like, the shitty Slice of Life anime and <laughs> cartoons where they're all on top of <laughs> each <laughs> other over a wall. Yeah. <laughs> where you slide out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Hikari uh, Tanazaki is standing at the door speaking to one Kader. <gasps> and you can hear them. And Hikari's like, so you're just looking around uh, where the Empress told you to look for a job? That's it? Yes, that's right. You see, until very recently, I was under the trawl of Sindara the Sculptor. And I don't know much about the world, but I believe that my uh, heightened intellectual capabilities mean that I would be a very good uh, fit at the uh, project that General Kasuhida seems to be running. You see, I used to be a chair. And Hikari's like, <laughs> you used to be a chair. You're so funny. She twirls over her <laughs> hair. <laughs> oh my god, no way. There's, there's no way. <laughs> and oh my god. Kader seems to be happily info dumping to her, and Hikari visibly seems to be totally smitten. Oh. God damn, she ain't even hiding it. 
She's like, so you used to be a chair? That's so silly. They're into each other. Damn. Honestly, she, good for she, them. She giggled a lot when they when when she talked about being a chair. Yeah, and that's not even funny. It's just true. It's just sad. <laughs> that, it is also. It's just sad. You can see that right now, Kader is very happily info dumping about uh, beetles, and that's because oh. she's relating them to warfare, and Hikari is just eating that shit up. <laughs> They're going to keep going until you interrupt them. Should we, like... I think... I think... I don't know. I kind of don't want to interrupt them. But I kind of... Don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, we can interrupt at any time. This is just... This is interesting to watch. I would like to investigate the both of them under a really huge microscope. <laughs> Hold on, I got this. I'm gonna study <clears throat> these guys. Oh my god, Masami and Senku, I'm so excited to uh, go across this corner that we're about to enter this room. Hikari fucking freezes off and Kader turns around and says, Oh, Masami, Senku, Chuji, hello. I was just telling Hi. Miss Hikari Tanizaki here all about beetles. That's wow. great, man. That's fantastic. Masami crosses their arms and gives Hikari a look. Hikari is not <laughs> returning your gaze and says, Radiant Winds, it's so good to see you again. You've grown so much since Danger Island. I'm so proud of you. Um, would you like to talk to Kasuhira? She says, <laughs> not making eye contact once. She is smart mm. enough to know. She has lived with you for a while, like on Danger Island. She knows what you're like by now. <laughs> I think Masami is just smiling. You don't want to catch up with us? I believe that you'll be staying here in Goka for a while, and if you do, then I think it would be a great time to catch up more in private, she says, and kind of shoots a look at Kader. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can tell you want much privacy right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry, we'll get out of your hair. Not that Wait you need second. to, it's just I'm sure you have so much to discuss with Kasuhira about the project. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would you like to go inside? She says, voice breaking again. Not really. I think you should go inside. You'll really be interested by what's inside. I'm pretty interested out here. <laughs> I'm sure you are, Chuji. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Let's go inside. <laughs> Whatever. You guys make your way inside. And after poking around for a few minutes and meeting with people who. The Golden Kabuto seems very busy, by the way. There's like a lot of people here. A lot of people in strange outfits as well, with like goggles and coats. Like, are these alchemists? Oh. What the hell are alchemists doing here? This is a fucking, like, warfare company. Yeah. Wait. But after a while, you do run into Papa. General Kasuhida is grinning as he walks out, and he throws his arms open and says, Radiant Winds! Hi. Hida. I, I think he doesn't say anything. I think he just pulls all three of you to a big hug. Ah. Oh, goodness. Okay, hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you all... How are the three of you doing? You saved the world. You defeated the sculptor. You saved the Ruby Phoenix. I knew you were good, but this is another level. <laughs> You're great. You look happy. Is it that obvious? Yeah. Flights. Um... So, the projects. How are you've things heard. going? You've heard. Well, we ran into Hikari briefly, <laughs> and we've just heard that you've been working on something. Well, the Golden Kabuto has been working very hard on the project. Secrets, of course, don't go spreading the details yet. We're not ready for a public announcement, but... Ooh. 
I We've see. got a partnership, and I think I'd like to show you it. Uh, Hida smiles, almost conspiratorially, and says, What I show you today, I must request that you don't tell anyone. We're not ready for a public announcement yet. Uh-huh. Okay. And he starts to guide you through some stairs, and they are winding downwards. He passes a few security clearances and says, After the day Mogaru attacked the city, it became clear that Goka needs protecting. We were given a large budget from Nyanfei to help keep Goka safe from further kaiju attacks. We mm -hmm. spent the first large portion of it on building seawalls. This should at least stop giant monsters from wading in from the ocean. But we were left with a sizable amount of money to spend. And rather than keep it on building more walls, I spoke with a partner and he opens a door into a chamber and this chamber is massive. I'm talking like, um, it's like a giant ring around a pit. Um, there's like lights and everything lighting it up the whole way, but you, the pit is so deep that you can't see what's inside it. But there's a smell in the air of like machinery and chemicals. And mm -hmm. what is back to you, but then turning when you enter is another familiar face. Aldenar Unmar. Ooh. Who you may recognize as the, the um, alchemical mogul <laughs> and the ex of Kasohida. Divorce no more? Aldenar smiles and says, Radiant Winds! I see uh, Kaso has brought you here. First name basis. Interesting. Hi. Yeah, hello. Um, uh, hi. How have you two been? The two of them share a look and say, uh, bef the two of them like exchange a look before looking back to you. I think they are quiet for a moment before Hida says, we've been doing well, but we have combined the budgets of both of our companies, the Golden Kabuto and the Silver Sea Isle Chemicals to produce something experimental to protect Goka. And Unmar smiles and says, what is it that a mercenary company and an alchemical uh, factory could do when they put their work together? And he gestures for you to come step on what is essentially a little lift that goes deeper into the pit. Why don't I show you? All right. Cryptic, but okay. It's kind of freaky. Are you gonna like push us into vats? I don't think they're gonna there's do no, that. There's no, there's no vats it? involved. Come on. So you're gonna push us into so something? <laughs> We've got something that will shake up the world. Okay. And you guys get into the lift, and it descends. And you see as it's descending what it is that the two of them have been building. Because across from the elevator is a man. <gasps> a man that stands 40 feet tall. Ooh. Made exclusively of shining steel. What You're the fuck? Choking. I present to you Ultra Hero, Protector of Goka. The first of many. Oh my god. They have made, it would appear, they've started building mechas to defend Goka from Kaiju. Oh my god. Oh That's my so cool. fucking god. What the fuck? Hida steps forward and says, These will be piloted only by the very best of my mercenaries. And uh, then Unmar stands forward and says, And using the most innovative construct building technology. A pilot will be able to control one of these giant construct men and use it to fight kaiju one-on-one -on -one 
to make sure that never again does the city of Goka have to face against a monster that no one can defeat. Oh! Holy shit. Jeez. That's incredible. We're building multiple based on once the full series is complete, they will be able to protect our city from all manners of monsters. And Hida grins at you and says, What do you think? Wow. I have no words. That is... I mean, I thought what we did with... I thought what I did with, with Kaichi was good. The two of them share a very pleased glance. It's obvious that your approval was very important to them. He this is really cool. He the beams and says, I really hope you'd think so. They were made in your image, after all. The heroes of Goka. <laughs> uh. You're free to come down any time and check out on our progress. Within the next few months, maybe they'll be uh, ready for the first few to go out there. Wow. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, we're going to fucking visit again. Of course. And Hida turns and says, and you're always welcome to come pick up jobs from the Golem Kabuto, of course. <laughs> Thank you. No. This is, by the way, canonical and not something I just added. Goka, from here on out, will literally be protected by mechas. That's so cool. What? That's awesome. <laughs> I literally love that so much. Dice will roll will return after these messages. Hey everyone, if you're listening to this, chances are that you have just listened to every episode of Dice Will Roll Ruby Phoenix. Thank you very much for coming along with us. It's been a really, really special journey. Um, this is the final episode, as we've made clear. There won't be any episode next week, although we will be putting out a retrospective probably Wednesday of this week. Um, afterwards, Dice Will Roll will be going on a little break as we gear up for um, Campaign 4. We're going to be probably waiting until the Pathfinder remaster drops in mid-November, about two months from now. Uh, mostly because uh, along with you know, getting ready for a new campaign. Uh, Dave will also be moving across the Atlantic Ocean to live with me here in Ireland for a while. Um, so that's an exciting thing for us and one that will take a good bit of attention before we hop into our next adventure. Um, that retrospective will have a few questions from the fans answered. Um, it'll also announce campaign four and uh, soon after the announcement, we'll probably start opening up uh, Patreon cameos for uh, the next adventure. So if you guys have characters you want me to be playing and for our heroes to be meeting on their journeys, you'll get a chance very soon. Um, other than that, I just want to really say thank you. Um, we're just about to hit 400,000 downloads on Dice Will Roll and that still seems so surreal to me. Um, the fact that we have gotten this far, it's really been a special journey, and I cannot thank you all enough for taking us this far. That's all for now. I'm being sentimental. Um, enjoy the rest of the episode, and as always, everyone, keep it rolling. See you guys soon. We now return to Dice Will Roll. So, I think some time passes now. It's the afternoon. You've spoken about the sponsors with Kumai Shai. You've talked with your family. You've checked in on uh, <laughs> the future of Goka's safety in the form of the Ultra Heroes. You only have a few more things to do before you go get crowned as the champions of the Ruby Phoenix tournament, right? Yeah. Right. Six other teams await you. Who would you like to go say hi to first? Um, I mean, we could speak to any team, but just know that Chuji is staring at Shen. Hmm. The rest of you? I mean, Senku's pacing himself, so um, he's not immediately like like rushing towards anybody. So I, I really don't think that Senku minds talking to Shen. Okay, we could do Shen first. Team. Yeah. 
so I think to prepare yourselves, uh, you go back to um, also you you might even go back to the Ruby Village to pick up some stuff that you left behind. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of had to leave in a rush, and you want to pick it all up before you say bye to everyone. But as you are in your old home, cleaning stuff up, there comes a very loud and decisive knock on the door. Senku goes to answer it. He's like, I got it. Okay. And as the door opens, looming above you, Senku, with that beautiful pearl-like skin and those dark eyes now in the shape of a crescent moon, is Liang Shen. And he looks down at you, Senku. And for a moment, yeah, it's, he... it's a foot. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fair drop. He looks down at you, and I think he almost seems surprised that you opened the door. And oh. he looks over your shoulder off at Chuji, and then he looks back to you, Senku, and says, "Is Chuji there?" Oh, did you need them for something? Uh, yes. Well, I quite wanted to speak with them. Oh, about what? Uh, he blinks. <laughs> um, not nothing in particular. I sim. Excuse me. <laughs> ah, well, I just thought you know, I'd want to know what you what you wanted to talk to him about. I. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not blind. I. Uh, is that so? <laughs> I think he looks behind him for a second and makes sure that n neither of them can hear. Yeah, she's just doing their own fucking thing. <laughs> and and then Senku turns back and he 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 like gestures down for him to, <laughs> to go down there. Shen looks around a little bit, like am I am I hallucinating? Before he like squats a little bit. Senku grabs him by the collar and says, "If you hurt him, I will kill you." <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm not kidding. Y <laughs> yeah. I'll, all right, I I won't. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, good. He looks very. I honestly think he's a little bit startled and maybe <laughs> intimidated by this. Okay, good. So like, cool. It's going. He goes, Chiji. Huh? You, you, you look, and they look over. It's Senku, and then the foot above him is 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 Shen. Shen has the most bewildered fucking expression on. It's like an old lady just robbed him. Shuji doesn't make any kind of like connection to something like like that just happening. How could they see it coming, right? How could they? How could they? <laughs> uh, they look joyed to see Shen but I think that they're frozen for a second um and they they look at Shen they look at Senku and they're I don't think they're sure what to do um I, I think that they kind of like uh, stand up straight and they <laughs> walk towards the door where Senku is and they like take a hold of the door uh with like their arm in front of Senku and they're like thanks don't mention this. <laughs> okay. Sanku says, skipping off towards Masami. <laughs> um, can can we just go for a walk around the Ruby Village? They 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 nod their head. They nod their head. Yes. Um, and as he steps away, Jun Xiao and Halspin make their way inside, and you're like, hi. Um, <laughs> and Jun Xiao pats Sanku's shoulder and says, "You did good. That was a very good idea." What makes you say that? <laughs> no, I just think a show responsibility was a good idea. But I do hope uh, that Chuji will come visit Shen because that was... Uh, we rarely see Master Shen show so much uh, motivation as when Chuji's around. Oh? I don't know what your future plans are, but I'd be happy to see you come around more to Xianjing sometime. And a houseman comes in and says, Hey, Masami, what's up? Finger gun, finger gun, finger gun. Oh, hey, hi, what's up? <laughs> and I think 
as these two come inside and get their way out of get out of Shen's way as well, Shen and Chuji, the two of you walk around the now abandoned Ruby Village. It's likely that this place will be taken down. It's temporary housing after all. But it's a little humbling to walk around it now. You remember about a month ago fighting and training with Yarika here by the Sand Dummies. You remember bathing in that uh, hot spring with Shen. And you remember as you walk past the Lightkeeper's house, the Lightkeepers. As you're walking, Shen... I think you probably both walk quietly for a while. Yeah, it's complete silence. Before Shen clears the throat and says, that Sanku is... Um, he has a quite a strong force of personality, doesn't he? What? Oh, no, no, <clears> nothing. <throat> uh, d never mind. Um, what? He looks you up and down a little bit as you're walking and says, you kept your promise. <clears throat> yeah, I, I wanted to. So I did. I hope it doesn't bother you. He shoots his eyebrows up and he rolls his eyes and says, Clearly it doesn't bother me, Chuji, if I ask you to... No, it doesn't. If anything, I'm... I'm very glad that you did. And he averts his eyes and says, I will be the first to acknowledge that your mannerisms are boorish and you completely lack an etiquette, but... Gee. <laughs> you're also one of the greatest fighters to ever live. He turns so blue. <laughs> and Shen says, eyes cast down. When you're around, I I feel like I can be too. I don't want you to go. I... They stop walking. I, I don't want... I don't want anyone to go. But I... Shen, I especially don't want you to go. I think Shen probably walked another few steps on, so he's got his kind of back to you dramatically for a moment. But when he turns, you can see that his eyes are sparkling ever so slightly. But he's he's not showing it. He's not showing it. Mm -hmm. and that's where the tragedy is, isn't it? This is always where it was going to go. At the end of the tournament, we have to go our own ways. I need to go back to my home. I need to give my sister this. And he pulls out the celestial peach and just holds it firmly in his hand I need to bring the winnings that I earned and it was silly for me to ever think no no and he straightens up a little bit and he walks towards you Chuji I hope it isn't too presumptuous but I'd like to ask you to make another promise what I wouldn't dare to ask the wind to stop blowing, and I certainly wouldn't ask for the radiant winds to stop adventuring. And I can't leave my home. I must keep doing my duty, but promise that you'll visit. Promise that we'll see each other. Please. I promise. I... I promise, Shen. Just... They kind of avert their eyes from him and turn their head to the side. I don't want anyone else as <clears throat> a sparring partner. <laughs> That's good. I also don't want anyone else as a sparring partner. Great. I'm glad we can agree on that. I would like to commit to being your sparring partner in that case I genuinely I don't think Chuji can look at Shen right now they're way too fucking embarrassed uh they've kind of got their like hand in front of their face their wrist is like over their mouth <laughs> and I think they're really trying not to like smile or be giddy I man <laughs> man <laughs> Shen looks to you, Chuji, and says, I haven't done this before. 
and I would appreciate your patience. But, Chuji, hmm? would it would it be all right if I were to kiss you now, on purpose this time? Um, Chuji nods. Chuji nods, and they <laughs> they stand still for Shen. And bowing his head, Shen steps forward, brings his index finger under your chin and tilts your head up and presses his lips against yours. Earlier in your adventure, Chuji, you specifically said when you were sitting by that little forgotten god on Bunmu that Chuji's never been in love and probably never will be. Is that still true? No, they are so totally and completely madly in love with Shen. And Shen is so totally and completely in love with Chuji. And somewhere, the old Tomaton gods are smiling. After a while, you've gathered everything from the uh, Ruby Village, and you're ready to say your goodbyes to the other teams. Chuji, you and Shen part ways for now at least. And Shen holds the Celestial Peach, mounts the back of Sway, and gets ready to go save his sister at last. Who would you like to speak to next? I'm thinking about Speakers to the Wind personally, but I like all of the teams, obviously. Okay. Would you guys like to go down... And say hi to the Speakers of the Wind? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You guys go looking for them. And the Speakers of the Wind, you find them building a teleportation circle. Because, of course, how else would they make their way? And the amount of uh, Cinnabar they have to power the teleportation after they bought ma- far more than they needed... And as you approach, uh, teacher Mafika Ayawari looks over at you as you approach, and he beams as you walk over and says, Students, stop what you're doing for a moment. The Radiant Winds are here. Hi. Hello, Sanku. Masami, Chuji. How are you all doing? Really good. A little tired. I can assume it's been quite the adventure, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Understatement, I feel. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Are you getting ready to go back? Akila Stormheel, the halfling with the jaguar mask, uh, kind of bounces on the spot a little bit and says, It's been nice here in Tianxia, but it's not, it's not rainy enough. I miss home. I miss the rainforest. I'm going to be glad to be going back to the Megambia. And Nala the Reed, the Magus Gripley, she kind of bounces as well and says, You're telling me. It's so dry here right now. It's the middle of the wet season. Uh, <laughs> you have a wet season? Like a wet and a dry season? Yes. Oh. Huh. I didn't even think about that. As the summer ends, it's starting to get cold. It feels strange, but it's not raining. Ugh. And well, it's just here. There are places <laughs> in Tianxia where it's more like that, uh, where it's more tropical, but here, yeah. Uh, Netio, the half-elf wizard, um, kind of smiles and says, but we have learned a lot while we are here. Our, our learnings will never be the same. And Ovark, the dragon-obsessed uh, half-orc, uh, punches his hands together and says, you're telling me? I'm going to write my whole uh, thesis on on the Celestial Dragon. There's so much to research. Primordial dragons like that? That's insane. And strings on the river in Kila, the Anadi who weaves words with her webs, uh, writes, And what of you, Radiant Winds? What will you do now? Uh, um... The plan is the rest. For now. And after that... Well, we usually just kind of wings it. We'll probably help more people and adventure some more. And I'd like to travel some more. 
and teacher Mafika Ayawari steps forward and says, if I may, I may mm -hmm. have a suggestion. Oh. You see, he kind of stretches up. I'm going to be incorporating a lot of what we learned here back in the Magambia. I'm thinking of doing my own tournaments. We have Leshy Gardens and I'm imagining setting up some fighting tournaments to help the more martially inclined of our students to practice and perhaps using a few of the secrets from your Casa Ojeda, maybe wooden mechas? That might be some fun. That would be very interesting. <laughs> and that's when I'd like to ask you, Tree. Us? The things you've seen, the things you've done, the Magambia would be honored to have you all as guest lecturers. Whoa. Not full time. Whenever you happen to be in the Mwangi Expanse. I know you'll be paid handsomely for coming to talk to our students. And he smiled Whoa. very openly. Oh, my God. Um, I've, I've never thought about the more formal magic learning. I learned all my magic from Lolo. Lolo is scampering onto your shoulder and says, I can teach others for money? <laughs> Lolo! <laughs> I was never aware this was an option. Sanku. Lolo. You must yes. owe me thousands of gold. I think I've paid you back in the amount of food I've bought you. I retract my statement, he says glumly. <laughs> <laughs> but Ayawari turns to you all and says, Nonetheless, my offer is serious. The Magambi is built on the strength of thousands, all those who have come before and shared their knowledge, and all those who have learned from it, sharing their knowledge on forwards. Masami, Sanku, Chuji. If you ever do come down to a uh, Garund, and wish to share the secrets you learned on Iron Mountain and in the world of the sculptor, I think you could change the lives of our students. And I mean that. Well, I was curious about the Magambia. It's not some, I, I don't know that I'd want to be there full time or, or anything, but the idea of a school all about magic is pretty interesting to me. I don't know when, but I'd definitely be a guest lecturer once or twice. I'm happy to hear it. Be sure to contact me if you do. You can reach me practically any way you can imagine. <laughs> I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. Mm -hmm. I have learned some pretty interesting spells recently. And I think you say your goodbyes to Speakers to the Wind who prepare to travel across the globe back to the jungles of the Moangi Expanse and tell your stories to countless other students. Who now? Uh, I'm thinking the Arms of Balance. <laughs> sure. I think maybe, Masami, you catch the Arms of Balance on your own. Okay. Um, you find them while the others are... Um, I think maybe the the others find Tino's toughest, or at least Malako, Zumi, and Gig. No sign of Tino, but they he died. They happily no. chat away uh, at a cafe, talking about uh, where they're planning on heading next. You know. Mm. But you see the arms of balance uh, nearby, uh, walking down the street with bags full of. Uh, things they're taking on their journeys with them you know stuff they've bought in the market and they are speaking confidently with each other what do you do um they pick up their walking speed and approach and uh give them a little wave and say hey you guys heading out soon bavana turns and smiles and says masami and i think she hugs you come on okay <laughs> they have back absolutely and then a second later, Raunak, the um, the undying uh, monkey boy, mm -hmm. also hugs you. And he's a little nope. he's a little like <laughs> soggy, but like you know you know like <laughs> when you wash a teddy bear in warm water and let it dry. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of. He's also hugging. And says, "Hey, I'm here too." <laughs> Thank you, Raunak. And Bavana looks at you and says, "You look well, all things considered." 
<laughs> well, nothing's in imminent danger. No need to worry about any more tournament fights. I think everyone is due to relax a little. Uh, Boomat Gren says, I don't think we'll be doing that. Really? What oh, do you guys no. have in mind? <laughs> and I think Sunita looks under her nails and says, We've been talking, and I think we came to a conclusion after seeing everyone who came here. And, you know, Bumat, the sand monk, and Sunita, the cold uh, monk, the two of them just kind of exchange a look before Bavana steps forward and says, We came here too early. Too early? There are so many things that you were all able to accomplish that I could never understand. We made a mistake by applying this year. Bumat then punches his hands together. But also, if we didn't come here, we would have learned that we were making a mistake. So it's not a mistake in the end at all. And Raunak kind of cracks back a little bit and says, what we're kind of going in circles around saying is we're going to start training. Oh. Okay, so um, are you guys just going to go train back in your homeland? Are you going to start adventuring it up again? Like, what's the deal? Bavana smiles and says, Well, we're not just training for the sake of training, Masami. We're going to join you as the 31st Ruby Phoenix Champions. <laughs> we have 10 years until the next tournament, and we will win that time. The other tournament goers, they'll be novices, only just starting out. Whereas we, we will have witnessed the attack of King Mogaru, the Celestial Dragon, the power of the Affinity Ablaze. <laughs> we will be the strongest fighters in Galarian, and it's all thanks to you. <laughs> well, always happy to help contribute to another person's victories and strengths, and come the next Ruby Phoenix tournament, I'll be there. Raunok kind of squats and says, yeah, you're going to be an enforcer? You're going to be a sponsor? What's the plan? <laughs> I don't know about that. A lot of that will require me to stay in Goka, and I doubt the others would want to stay for too long, at least. Sunita smiles and says, you can always do what we're going to do. Travel the world and then come back. I think we will. And I know for a fact I'm definitely not missing the next Ruby Phoenix tournament. Who knows, maybe I'll be an enforcer. <laughs> maybe I'll be your enforcer. Or maybe I'll just be in the stands. I think they all grin a little bit. And Bavana holds your hands and says, Don't forget us. We won't ever forget you. There's <laughs> no way I'm forgetting you guys. And I think she squeezes your hands a little bit, Masami, before nodding and starting to walk on. And Bumat flexes at you. Raunok gives you a peace sign. Sunita just kind of flicks her hair at you and blows a kiss. And the arms of balance walk down the streets away from you. I think when their back is turned, Masami's smile slowly turns into a... Uh, slowly turns into a frown. Um, they kind of hug their arms close to them before walking back. Um, they're happy that the Arms of Balance will come back for the next Ruby Phoenix tournament. They're happy that they're taking their training so seriously. But... The leaving part, the seeing them go off, was a little hard for them. But yeah. they return to the others with a with a smile anyway, and give them uh, the team's regards. So, Sanku and Chuji, you hear about the Arms of Balance's plan. You talk to most of Tino's toughest. Um, Malako is very, very vocal about wanting to go and explore Iron Mountain and see what uh, the rest of you missed. 
<laughs> Cute. But again, Pino's not here. According to uh, Malako, he left early in the morning to go for a walk. You'll probably run into him at some point. Where is that old motherfucker? Who do you want to talk to now? Winter's Roar or the Biting Roses? Biting Roses, Biting Roses. <laughs> sure. Okay. You make your way. And I think, you know what? I think you find them at that same cafe uh, that Masami, I think you might have met them at before you departed for Iron Mountain. Yarika Artus Lantondo and Grandfather Mulandez. They all sit around a little cafe table. It's a little surprising for most of the people to see the ghost of an old man just sitting there drinking tea, but he is there. And as you all... Sorry, one second. As you all approach, Yarika looks up and beams. Genuinely, she beams and says, Radiant winds, hello. I foresaw your coming in the leaves. <laughs> Did you? No, I just knew that you'd want to say hello. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> she beams, she gets up and she she hugs her bro. My bro. Can they do a cool little handshake? They, you do the coolest fucking handshake. Up, down, left, right. A uh, little static shock of magic between your fingers. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, punch, 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 you know? Yeah. And she beams and Artus uh, nods and says... It seems of all the teams, we'll miss you most of all, Radiant Winds. You better. I mean, you gotta come over and... Ugh. I don't know. See us again? I think we're really gonna miss you guys. Yarika nods sagely and says, Arcadia's a long way away. But we'll find a way, won't we? After all, and she kind of taps her heart a little bit, we're linked now, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> can you still do the Affinity Ablaze? Oh, um... Can I? Do you give it a try? Do you use Biting Roses glimpse to beyond? Yeah. Chuji, your eyes suddenly glow white, and there are spirits everywhere. Just walking the streets. <gasps> That's a yes, that's a yes, yes, I can still use it, yes, yes, yes. Uh, wow. They seem calm, peaceful. They're not going away. They're already here. And Yarika smiles a bit and says, Good. At least you'll be able to touch into our souls, you know? And Lantondo reclines and says, Yes, yes, soul magic, our whole thing. Of course. We've already been trying to figure out exactly how this whole thing works, but being honest, it seems that the magic of the Celestial Dragon functions more on a dream logic type uh, situation. I can't understand how it works. It just does. But be sure to use your affinity ablaze. Call on us, even if we're sleeping. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? That sounds... A little disruptive. Don't really want to do that to you guys. <laughs> Grandfather Mantis, by the way, very quietly is just making a cup of tea for Lolo, and he's like, oh, thank you. Wow, oh, you're a handsome old man, aren't you? Oh my god, what? <laughs> and... Uh? Well, am I not allowed? Goodness knows yeah. the rest of you do it all the time. What? I don't do it. What are you talking about? Oh, that's just Juju. I read what? your grocery list. Whoa. What? He's what? <laughs> Yarika, up! Yarika clears her throat and says, So, what's the plan for the Radiant Winds? Will you be sponsoring fashion brands now, perhaps? Or oh, God, maybe no. opening up your own dojos? Uh, Now's as good a time as any to retire, you know? We're not, why is, we are not going to retire. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. We probably will. Yeah, it kind of looks up at the sky. I feel we got what we came for. The other side is real. Spirits do return to us and watch over us. 
Now, I'm very interested in researching those yokai in the woods. They seem most interesting. But I don't foresee the Biting Roses going out and doing much adventuring anymore. Lantondo nods and says, I have a shop to get back to, you know. I do a lot of uh, custom harrow engravings. I've been neglecting it on my adventure. And Artis nods and says, mm, And I have my children. You have kids? Yes, four of them. Four? This Is has not come up ever. <laughs> I didn't know you had kids. You never asked. That's fair, I guess, but like... Four? I'm very <laughs> old. <laughs> I guess so, man. Wow. Some of those children are much older than you at this point. Huh? I'm I 200 see. years old. Not really as old. Uh, we didn't cool. ask about the age either, but then again, when would it have come up? I think he kind of leans back and says, but don't worry. And he kind of shoots you a smile, Masami. My partner isn't in the picture. Ooh. Masami's eyebrows raise. <laughs> <laughs> a direct and... flirt attack. <laughs> and I used to that anymore. Um, <laughs> like, I see. Well. Yarka looks between the two of you and says, All the more reason for you to come visit Arcadia sometime. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking about visiting before already as they look at Artis. <laughs> oh my God, you people are shameless. <laughs> How was what I was doing any worse than this? <laughs> Lolo frowns. <laughs> oh, but you guys are used to it with me. Come on. You're a wet little dragon man. It's so much worse. I think Yarika smiles and says, You'd like our village. It's small, but some of the best occultists in Golarion are from there. I feel you'd all have a very interesting time learning some of our customs. Certainly, it was very interesting to learn yours. And she kind of puts down the bowl of ramen she was eating. And she I think she looks at Yuchuji and she closes her hands into a fist with a thumb tucked outside. And says, I'm sure we'll see each other in our dreams, though. Meet you there. And they put their hand into a fist, though. Fist bump. They fucking fist bump. Yarika stands and says, Good luck, Radiant Winds. And I trust that whatever prize you win will be one to change your lives. Thanks. And now, the Biting Roses make their way into the crowds full of spirits that you can see now, Chuji. If only for a few minutes more. We're all left with the Viking ship on the end of uh, at the harbor of Goka. You guys want to make your way down? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You make your way down, and she's a beautiful ship with like a dragon-headed bow and that, those beautiful stripy sails and the oars and lots of other Vikings, not just Winter's Roar. Um, none of them are human, you notice. There's a bunch of Nephilim. Oh. Uh, there's uh, orcs. There's bugbears. There's um, goblins, you know, winter goblins. Let's go. And as you approach... There's Bjorn Ramel, the uh, human ice wizard, who turns and says, Ah, Radiant Winds, hello! Hi. Hey. And Kel Pashar, the uh, champion of Gozra, steps forward and says, There we are. The best fighting team in the world. <laughs> Truff Frost Knuckles, the bugbear brawler, comes up and he puts a big hairy arm around your shoulder uh, Sanku. He puts a big hairy arm around your shoulder Sanku and a big hairy arm around your shoulder Masami and he hugs you both and he looks at you Chuchi and says yes you've sure shown the sculptor who's boss huh no yeah, more did. making statues for him <laughs> Sigrid Beal the orc magus queen of the Linorm kings steps off to bow the ship and you can see that she was just with a massive, decapitated Linorm head that's now strapped down to the deck. And oh, yes. she comes down and says, Radiant Twins. Hi. She smiles and says, Thank you for everything. 
I know we have not always seen eye to eye. We acted rashly at the airy. You yes, kicked you kicked our, our asses on the ruby tower. Oh, yes, we did. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> she sends you a look, and it's like a really like a paralyzing gaze of like, which of us is the queen again? <laughs> which of us is the queen again? Just remind me quickly, which of us killed a Lenorm in single combat? Was that me? I think it might be me. She didn't say any of that. But that look, <laughs> she like turns and looks at you, and it's like, She's practically shooting beams out of her eyes for a moment. It's actually like almost a little distressing. Like, you feel yourself <laughs> shit. You you go cold for a moment. <laughs> Choose your fees to look at her. Well, you're forced to look at her when she takes your hand and holds it and shakes it and says, "You're the best goddamn warriors we've ever fought beside." And it's thanks to you that we will be setting up Ridian home. I'm glad that we could help. We are thinking our crest maybe will involve some of your symbols. Obviously made to look like our own lands, but maybe an arctic fox, maybe some tree branches like your horns, Sanku, maybe some fire for you, Shi Chuji. Love a good fire. We'll figure it out. I am not artist. I am warrior, and now I am queen. And because of you, the people of the Linorm Kings will always have somewhere they can go when they need to be safe. I'm glad. I'm glad. I never had the chance to grow up safe. But now those that do not will. It's thanks to you, Radiant Williams. When I saw you beat that later on, I, I was panicking a little bit that you would die. Uh, but when I saw you, <laughs> when you cut your way out of that landworm, I'd never seen anything like that. Well, if you ever are in need of warriors, call to the land of Linorm kings. We shall make our way over and slay those who oppose you. And all of them go, yeah! They can't punch the air a little bit. <laughs> it's not every day that you get a Viking queen indebted to you. So, well done, Raiden Winds. Just another Tuesday. <laughs> By the way, have you said your goodbyes to Mr. Tung? We haven't found him yet. Ah, then you should perhaps move quickly. He's leaving. Where is he? Uh, South side of the city. Travel oh fast, God. Radiant Winds. Chuji, get on, get on the staff. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> Sanku gets on the staff and he's like, uh, Usami, you can fly also. Uh, I got it, I got it. Uh, well, thank you for the tip. Uh, I hope that you travel safely and uh, you'll have a great one as king. Queen, yes. We'll, we'll visit you guys. We love we'll you. Bye. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. There's like a trail of like blue water magic and Sanku and Chuji fly off. Yeah, there's just a gust of wind where Masami once was. <laughs> <laughs> They're so Naruto. <laughs> I think Sigrid looks up at you all and smiles as you fly away. And you leave Winter's Roar on their own to make their way back to land of the Linorm Kings. You find Tino. He is walking, like I said, out on his own, out to the south side of the city. He's got a big heavy bag and he's just kind of walking out there on his own. We fly directly into him at high speeds. <laughs> what happens is uh, Tino from behind him hears, where do you think you're going? And I think he turns and smiles as you're going and says, Ah, hey, I knew you'd show up. There's no way that the Radiant Winds wouldn't show, uh, find me just as I'm leaving. Champion's luck. Are you going out on your own? Tino kind of folds his arms a little bit. And you can see now his age showing more than ever. His, there is a silver streak through his hair after the transformation you can see he just looks a little tired yeah uh i'm leaving tino's toughest what they're just gonna be toughest now <laughs> they might be malakos mighty i don't know ah 
Haven't hit the same. I'm going home. Back to Quain for a while. I'm gonna go see my family again. My kids. Visit my brother's grave. He was the reason I came out here to do all of this in the first place. And you know what? Even though I didn't win the, Ru the Ruby Phoenix tournament. I'd like to take he's proud of me. Even just getting into this tournament means that you have to be one of the best of the best. <laughs> hey man, it was a fluke we got in. We just happened to be around you when the timing was right. No. You did the right thing. You were just you. I think he looks around and he kind of bows his head. Hey, if it's anything, I promise I'll keep training. <laughs> well, it's always good to make sure you keep that up. Make it a habit. But, look, whatever you decide is your decision, ultimately. Yeah. It's not an easy call to make, but... I feel like I've had enough excitement for a lifetime. I would completely understand retiring yeah. from adventuring forever after this. Yeah. I'm going to stop being a, a fighter and go be a dad, you know? Mm -hmm. That's fair. And I think he turns his back to you guys and he looks out the crossroads outside of Goka. You know, I, I can't really explain it, but <laughs> these past few weeks, they've felt like a thousand years, man. You're telling us. Oh, I completely understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sincerely hope I get to see you guys again. Well, you're not getting rid of us that easy. Like, <laughs> we leave you alone. <laughs> we're, a tr we're a traveling adventures party. And I have a house that can walk. I think he turns around and you can see he's got big teary eyes and he pulls Aww. all three of you into a big fucking hug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew you guys were the greatest fighters in the world. And I'm glad I got to be a little part of your story. <laughs> you are much more than some part in a story. You're our friend. I love you guys. <laughs> Oh, can it, you sap? I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> and Tino lets go and says, See you again sometime? Mm hmm. Of course. Tino nods and turns his back to you all and walks out of Goka. I'm gonna kill myself. When the rest of Tino's toughest go home, They'll find a note, and they'll understand. Honestly, it's something they kind of have been expecting for quite some time. But they do stick together. And they do keep the name of Tino's toughest. Oh. And Malako leads them on adventures around to go, uh, around Tian Sha in the name of the bravest man they ever knew. And they make sure to go visit him when they can. So... Radiant wins. There's only one person left for you to meet now. You want to make celestial your way to the, dragon. the celestial <laughs> dragon. Do you guys want to make your way down to the Ruby Garden, the place where Hao Jin will be waiting for you? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I I think before they leave uh, to go and do that, I think that, or maybe as they're walking, I think Shuji kind of pipes up and they're like hey um not to get sentimental or stupid or dumb or sound dumb and stupid but all right <laughs> the self-deprecation is enough we're a team obviously but thank you guys for everything i guess you This has seriously been my dream since I was a kid. <laughs> and I don't think with anyone else I could have been here. Chuji, you've been my family since my family wasn't acting very much like a family. And I met you. 
the, beforehand, I don't think it was possible for us to be family because whatever. But you've, you've been there since you met me, and I was a kid, like a little kid. I'm still young, but like a, a kid. Both of you. The Ruby Phoenix tournament wasn't the first thing I thought of. I just like helping people. Um, but I, I think we may have succeeded in helping people. <laughs> I'm just glad that you're here. I'm just glad that I could help. I wanted to make you happy. I'm happy. I'm so fucking happy. <laughs> you know, since the minute that we were fledgling adventurers, literally pretty much teenagers. Uh, very literally teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> you know I've had your back the entire time. And I will continue to have your back. Yeah, you're never getting rid of us. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to. Ever. <laughs> you're trapped in here with me. I don't think you'll be saying that when I chaperone your first date. I think that you won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think that I am going to find baby pictures of yours, and... Yeah, well, you're not gonna find them. I will. If, if, if I may, Lola pops up. You may. I... If you betray me, I'm I'm gonna no. get you. Lolo, I will buy you a whole fucking bakery. Now, while that is tempting, I wanted to pop in and say... Thank you to the tree of you as well um, I I'm a very lucky old man to have had tree friends like you that's all I really have to say on the matter thank you he kind of slinks down your shoulder a little bit thank you he's embarrassed now <laughs> Senku grabs him like when you hold the way you hold a cat <laughs> and he's like I love you too Lola and he gives him a hug Wet. You are you are slimy today. Always You're all so mean to me. I'm just an old man. <laughs> yeah, you are an old man, but I guess you're my favorite old man. Oh. <laughs> he fucking he looks at you with wet eyes. You're my favorite Chuji. I'm the only Chuji. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I only need the one. There's no one quite like you. I don't know if I don't know if you could handle if there were two. Probably not. He crumples his face. Probably not. <laughs> let's be real. Shall we go, adventurers, to our final goal? Do we even know what we want for from the Phoenix's vault? No. No idea. I I've been thinking about it all day and I don't I don't know. I don't know either. I it's there have been a lot of there's been a lot of stuff on all of our minds these past while uh it's not like we want to revive anybody who's died because everybody's still alive. Yeah. And it's not like we need money. I think we're set for the rest of forever. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't think of anything. I thought that maybe as we went along, I could have at least figured something out with how much I come. know about the vault. Yeah. That it would have come to you? Yeah. I thought we were going to have, like, I don't know, maybe this all-encompassing moment of clarity where we were like, oh, I want a star cannon. I don't think we need a star cannon. I like, doubt we need a star cannon. It is pretty cool, but I think I could just, like, learn a spell that looks like stars. That's true. Um, And then we could, like, have a cannon, but we could just buy that anytime. Maybe it could still come to us? I don't know. Let's I walk slow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we have some time. We'll figure it out. We always figure it out, right? I think we're a little used to winging it. <laughs> yeah, we're too used to winging it, actually. I think uh, we gotta 
start planning things more. Um, but shit, <laughs> it's not fun though. I I know that we're a team full of impro in like improvisation, but I I feel like planning could also help us sometimes. Well, sometimes, most of the time, the best plan is no plan at all. The, well, I think Juji's favorite plan is foot goes in face. <laughs> Knock bad guy down. My favorite plan is relying on these babies and they flex their arms. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll figure it out. Yeah. The entire time that they're going, Sanku is looks like he's actually straining himself from thinking so hard. Chuji starts like going off about artifacts that they know Haojin is in like possession of and like what they can do. And like none of them are things that they need or would be like interested in, probably. Mm-hmm. Chuji's knowledge mostly lies in just like cool sick shit that does like massive damage things they thought that they might want as a kid. Not anymore? No. Well, as you guys walk to the Ruby Garden, where only a month ago, you stood with all the other teams and crowds of Goku watching, but now it's just her. The Ruby Phoenix. With some gold shooting along her skin now. As she approaches, she smiles and says, Hello, everyone. Are you doing all right? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying goodbye to people. Yeah. She smiles and says, I'd always wanted to watch one of these tournaments myself. It makes me happy that I'm here for one, especially one as eventful as this. What are you all going to do once you're... Once you've selected your prizes? Well, after taking a little break, since the amount of life or death experiences we've had is... a lot... I want us to go adventuring again. Yeah. I personally will probably be taking a break as well. Once I've managed to fix up Goka, which I'll be doing within the next few weeks. I'm probably going to go back into the plains. Not forever, just to check in on some people. I don't want to repeat what happened with Sandara. Oh yeah, you would have met a lot of people. I did. And I can't let anything like this ever happen again. Now, it's not with as much fanfare as before, but... And she conjures up a crown with the symbol of a phoenix on it. Chi Chuji, would you? Uh, uh, yeah. And you bow forward. And she puts the ruby crown on your head. I hereby pronounce the radiant winds. Winners of the Tertiate Ruby Phoenix Tournament. And you feel a warm feeling pass over you. After all this time, you've done it. And as you stand up, Shi Chuji, Haojin waves a hand, and a portal opens. One woven not of strange numbers, but of beautiful ruby treads. Enjoy this moment, she says solemnly. It's the last before you make what may be the most important decision of your adventuring lives. And beyond that portal, as it opens, you see the infinite vault of Hao Jin. Artifacts as small as a coin or as large as an elephant stand perfectly ordered and labeled. Do you know what you'd like? I think that... Chuji steps forward a bit towards the portal and maybe this is the first thought they've ever had in their life um, <laughs> but they they kind of try and touch the threads surrounding the portal sends warm feelings through you and they 
They turn back and they look at Masami and they look at Senku and they say, Maybe. I... I think that... Maybe we do? I don't think any of us want to lose anyone. I know I don't. Hajin looks to you, tilting her head. This tournament's been a fucking dream. But... I don't know, maybe a dream doesn't have to end. In what way, Master Chuji? Is... Is there any way that we could see everybody whenever we wanted? Is that something all of you would like? How Jin turns and looks to the tree of you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, we've made so many friends from this tournament, and... All of them live so far away. And saying goodbye was one of the hardest parts. Haojin smiles and says, So in the end, you choose friendship. She knows what she can find you. An artifact of some sort that will tie your hearts, which are already tied through the power of the Athenia Blaze, to one another and make a demiplane buffer world where the, all of you can interact with one another. A home for you and your friends. In the weeks that will come after this, you won't say goodbye to your friends. You'll have meals with the Vikings of Winter's Roar as they show you how the progress of Radiant Holm is coming. You'll practice alongside the Arms of Balance along a custom-made river that flows down the side of a mountain as you all hold your balance on one foot. You'll study the supernatural with the biting roses as Yalika Mulandez shows you how to spot a ghost before it's even fully manifested. You'll go over notes with the speakers of the wind as teacher Mafika Ayuwari shows you exactly how they do it in the Magambia. You'll check in on Malako and Tino's toughest and you'll find out how Tino himself is doing with his family. And you'll have chances to make your way to their homes in the blink of an eye, walking through worlds like their doors. As Chuji, you are able to visit Liang Shen and his sister and his village and everything he fought for. The Radiant Winds choose the power of friendship as the greatest treasure of all. They take this over weapons that can shape worlds or artifacts which could change the path of history. You choose each other because that's the greatest strength of them all, isn't it? But that's what will happen in the future. Right now, Hao Jin stands before you, smiles softly, and a ruby phoenix guides you into her domain and says, well, why don't we have a look, champions? I'm sure we have something. After all, it's a big vault. Huh. And with that, the portal closes behind you and the radiant winds. Your legacy goes down in history as the best fighting team to ever have existed. Thanks for playing. Please insert two gold to try again. <laughs> and so ends the tale of the Fists of the Ruby Phoenix. The tale of Sindara the Sculptor. And the tale of the Radiant Winds. Goodbye, everyone. And thanks for playing.
Dice will roll Fist of the Ruby Phoenix would not have been possible without the support of our patrons. Actually a bot. Violet. Seraphine. Kyle Damon. Maxine Mainstream. Soul Grease Lobo. Nick Roberts. Phoebe Jeebies. Daisy Gilliam. Lux Rexus. Veteran Stormcrow. Sam Stryker. Tony Saunders. Mita. Arave. Varia and the Girls. Marshmallow Berry. Ferric Falcon. Luis Loza. Ares. Alexander Krizzle. May Cohen. Skyly. Kendra West, Genuinely Tricked, Transgirl Trish, Bal Punyon, Giant a Catman, Matthew Wilson Krasovich, Tillon Shark, Glitch HD, Jace Snooks, Jonathan Love, Sophia Verlera, G Barbera, Luke, Gideon, Sarah B, Seth, Kira, Lichelo, Gizmo, Fable McElduff, Ava, Remti Bright, Lonesome Chunk, Steph, Sean C, Natasha Leonley, Rhiannon C, Ellie, Kane Kendrick, Sky Evangeline, Triceratops, Anna Maria, Jordan, Enlil Derna, John de Bocador, SS66 Seeker, and Dame Valor the Third. If you'd like to see what you can get for helping us keep it rolling and prepare for Dice Will Roll Campaign 4, check out patreon.com slash Dice Will Roll today. <laughs>